Russia was once a formidable power in space. It's not only the first country to send a man to space and the moon, but also possessed the most advanced space technology in the world. And of course, we can't help but remind ourselves of that Russian pride RD-180, their best rocket engine. This engine itself has made Russia a leader in the money-burning industry for decades. Even the US still has to depend on the supply from Russia. However, all seem to have turned 180 degrees when Elon Musk founded SpaceX. SpaceX has developed the Raptor engine with ambitions of replacing Russia, and they succeeded. Sanctions introduced during the war between Russia and Ukraine and the aftermath made this clear. Now, Russia has finally realized that its best engine is no longer the best. It was completely replaced by SpaceX's own Raptor engines. So, how has Elon Musk's Raptor rendered Russia's best engine obsolete? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First, let's start at the beginning with the pride of the Russian rocket industry, the RD-180 rocket engines. Built by NPO Energomash in a factory outside Moscow, the RD-180 was simply better than any other rocket engine of its time. But what made it such a good engine? It helps to understand that there is a great deal of craft involved. Though the collaboration on rocket engines tend to involve hundreds of people, having someone with an instinct for good design in charge is vital. The trade-offs are too complex to be figured out by brute force or by committee. In the case of the RD-180, that someone was named Valentin Glushko. After the USSR lost to America in the race to the moon, designing the best possible rocket engine became a national priority. According to Vadim Lukashevich, an aerospace engineer and Russian space historian, Soviet leaders wanted to build the world's most powerful rocket, the Inertia, to sustain their space stations in Earth orbit and to lift the Buran, a would be Russian space shuttle. Glushko was given resources to build the best engine he could, and he was good at building engines. The result was the RD 170, the 180's older brother. The 170 and 180 have a big advantage. They are oxygen rich, which means exactly what it sounds like. They inject extra oxygen into the system. Oxygen rich engines tend to burn cleaner and ignite more easily. They also make possibly higher combustion or chamber pressures and thus better performance, but they are more prone to explode. It was thought that there will be no engine that can surpass the RD 180. But Elon Musk and SpaceX made this utopia possible. They created and developed the Raptor, which is superior to the RD-180 in every aspect. Frankly, in a way, Raptors are like an attempt to build a better violin than Stradivarius did, using modern methods. SpaceX has access to better diagnostics and more sophisticated simulation techniques than Glushko did. They also have another design feature important to the American Air Force. They're made in the US. Possibly the greatest technical advantage these new engines have over the 180 is that they use methane as fuel rather than kerosene, as the 180 does. Kerosene can gunk up the works of an engine after repeated use. Methane has a higher specific impulse and burns cleaner. It's also much easier, in principle, to synthesize on Mars, which Musk aims to do. Notably, the Raptor resembles the 180 in that it feeds the pre-burner exhaust into the combustion chamber, which ensures that almost all the fuel and oxidizer stored in the rocket's tanks are used to generate thrust. However, the Raptor relies on a tweak to Glushko's approach. Both fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich flows power its turbopumps which theoretically results in maximum efficiency. You can clearly see it through their technical specifications. When in February of 2019, Musk announced a successful test of SpaceX's Raptor engine, which is intended to power the company's next generation rocket Starship, he bragged of the high pressures reached in the Raptor's thrust chamber of 269 bar. Musk then took to Twitter 
to say that Raptor had exceeded the record held for several decades by the awesome Russian RD-180. And now SpaceX focuses on Raptor 2, which is the most iterative development version of Raptor, but will have more power. According to Musk's latest announcement, as SpaceX continues to ramp up ground testing of the upgraded engine variant, Raptor 2 now operates routinely at 300 bar main chamber pressure. Generally, the higher the chamber pressure, the more thrust and potentially more efficiency the engine can gain. Higher chamber pressures also let an engine be smaller for a given thrust level, also improving their thrust to weight ratio. Notably, the production rate for Raptor 2 now had reached 1 per day and was expected to improve in the future. Adam Kuker gave us a lot of scenes of the rigorous testing at the McGregor facility in Texas every day. Huge thanks to all of his hard work. The total thrust output at sea level is also a fair place to compare them. The Raptor is currently at 2,200 kilonewtons, the RD-180 at 4,150, and the F-1, still the king, at 7,740 kilonewtons. Thrust is great, but what's maybe just as important when designing a rocket is the thrust to weight ratio, or how heavy the engine is compared to how much thrust it produces. A higher thrust to weight engine ultimately means less dead weight the rocket needs to lug around. The RD-180 is 78 to 1. The Raptor, however, takes the lead with an astonishing 200 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. Amazing. The cost is also an aspect worth considering. The RD-180 is $9.9 .9 million per engine. Back in 2019, the cost of the Raptor engine was stated to be approaching $1 million. SpaceX plans to mass produce up to 500 Raptor engines per year, each costing less than $250,000. Impressively, Musk indicated that the Raptor 2 production cost was approximately half that of the Raptor 1. However, the cost is one thing, but another strong consideration for the cost of the engine is whether or not it's reusable. And here, the RD-180 is not reusable, or at least never been reused, which is different from Raptors, which will all be reused up to 50 flights. As a result, SpaceX's Raptor is truly an excellent engine. It beats Russia's best rocket in almost every way. What's more, the engine also completely helps the US's broomsticks to perform all the important tasks without any connection or any help from Russia. The American future is better with Elon Musk's vision and his team's effort. It's all thanks to them and their contributions that we have gotten this far in this day and age. Now, SpaceX is installing its new Raptor 2 engines on Super Heavy B7, heading to a static fire test. The company appears to have accepted the added risk of losing 33 brand new Raptor 2 engines in one fell swoop in return for the possibility of a much faster test campaign. It's unclear how long it will take SpaceX to install all 33 Raptors. However, the company has also tentatively requested road closures for some test windows this week. Here's hoping that all goes smoothly and quickly. And then, we can finally see the true power of the best engine ever. And with that, today's episode is finished. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, have a good one, and thanks for watching.